Hello everybody, welcome to the third tutorial in the series, the basics of programming with Python. So today we are going to be talking about data types, input and operations with variables. So let's get into an ide our idea and start coding. Okay, so we're going to open our last file, the last file we created with that video on the file. We'll be using this one to code and this. So before I continue, I would like to talk about expressions and statements in Python. So, for example, this 8 modulo 6, as we talked about in the last video, is called an expression. And this whole line is called the statement in Python. So, that's just basically the difference expression and statement. Okay, so let's get into data types, input, and operations with Python. So, we're going to be starting with data types. We have basically four data types in Python we have the float, in short for floating point numbers. We have the integers, that's int for it in short. We have the string, str for it in short, as you can see they are all highlighted. And we have the boolean. So when you're talking about floats, this just, these are just basically the decimal numbers, you know, like 1 1.5, 2.3.0, 3.333. So these are float simple numbers. We call the float in short. So integers and float are just numeric. They are both numbers, but Integers are just all numbers like you have your your three, your four, your minus one, your minus two rather, your minus one. You can also have minus one two point zero here. So, so that's basically for float and integers. So let's move on to strings. So when it comes to strings, strings are anything contained in double quotes or single quotes. So example, we can have Ima here in the, in the double quotes. So this is an example of a string. We can have dog. We can have cat. So they are basically the same thing. Anyway, you have double quotes and single quotes. They are basically the same thing. So also, we c when it comes to booleans, there are only two diff two types of booleans. We have the true and false. So those are the two types of booleans we have. So that's everything about data types you need to know. So I'm gonna give you a short exercise for you to do. So let's I want you to identify what I'll be writing down. So I'm gonna have this I'm gonna have and I'm also going to have what am I missing out? Okay. So you can pause the video right away and just put data types in front of it. Okay, so let's continue. This is a string. Surprisingly, though this is a number, but refer to a string. Once it's inside double quotes or single quotes, it becomes a string automatically. So this is a string. And this is a string as well. This is a float. And this is a boolean. So that's the answer for the exercise those are the answers for the exercise so, and if, if you got it correctly thumbs up you're moving ahead so, but if you don't understand make sure you do rewind the video to see, to watch again and understand the, the different data types you have okay so now let's let's let me talk more about var variables and data types here for example in the last video i created a variable called and assigned it to five so in this we actually assign the variable the data type of an integer that's why it was possible for it to run in python but you can't just put a random thing here and expect it to work it's going to give you an error so let's try that as you can see not defined name error okay so you can you can assign to numbers you can assign to strings you can assign to floats and so on so let's print age and see so you're gonna save that and run it. As you can see, we print that. You can also put this in single quotes. See the same thing anyway. Okay. Okay. So you're gonna save that and run that. As you can see, we also have a here. Nice. So you can also print floats 4.0. Save that and then you run it. Okay. 4.0. So if you notice something happened when we were dividing the last video if you divide four by two 
okay so let's try it dividing four by two you notice what we got in the last video we actually got a float so whenever you are dividing you don't get one number you usually get a float whenever you're dividing even if it's divisible the one um, the one year is divisible by the other one year so just that you know okay so now we're gonna move into inputs as you've seen we have the print function this is called a print function anything has has a keyword here and then parentheses parentheses in front is called a function so for example we have the print function and we have many other functions well really this was actually built by someone else so we'll call it built-in function so that we can print things out if not we would have to be writing our own print functions ourselves so this is a function so now i'm going to be talking about inputs which is also a function so when you are writing code you actually you want to be able to get inputs from your users which is something really important to be able to get inputs from your users else no user wants to resync code or through and retyping it themselves i mean the end users actually so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create a way to get inputs from the users so let's call this age so the way this is work this works is you type input then parentheses so this makes it a function i d i don't know if you saw that two tip yet yeah you can, you can see this two tip here read a string from your standard input so so as you are gonna use, make use of this prompt i will show you how that works now okay so the prompt is what shows what tells users what to type in so here we'll put please type in your age and then yeah. so when they do that we will print okay so let's let's just get inputs for now so we we'll save that and then we'll run into f5 so as you can see please type in your age so we'll type 17 and then we get inputs so we want to be able to do things with your age also so we'll print the age and then we'll run it so please type in your age 22 as you can see printed 22 we'll run that again we'll put 15 this time around okay 15 as well okay that was nice so now when it comes to printing you can also print multiple things i wanted to say that in the last video but i didn't want to say it because of i didn't explain data types at the moment so now that you know what data types is you know the strings you know the booleans you know the integers and the floating point numbers so now we can talk about it so when you want to print for example you want to put print your age is so 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 the way you do it is you create your double your string and then you, you type your age is then depending on what you want to do you can either concatenate that is add this with this or you just use sep commas to separate it and just one kali adds a separator for you okay, so don't don't worry about that you see what that does now so let's add this, this together so put space here so it doesn't affect it and yeah so you print so let's save that and run so what is your age you type 15 and then your age is 15 as you can see so that's amazing what you can do with python so your age is then 15 but if we do not put this space here you see what will happen just type in your age and then the three see your age is 33 as you can see so we need we need to put this space here okay so by the way it's more advisable to put this because you don't know what your input might be sometimes for any situation whenever you are using an input even if you type in number this input automatically changes the number to a string so there are various ways we can check for the types of our input so i'm going to show you one here so we're going to print we also use the type function so you can use a function inside a function so what we we'll do is print type of age and then we'll close it so what we did here was let's let's align this one so you can see it we print you are printing the type of age so this is going to get type of age the type of whatever we input here and then it's going to print it out so we'll save that and then we'll run okay so let's print 22 as you can see the pretend printed is printed strings so though we inputted an integer we printed string so that's what the input does it converts our input to a string okay so i hope you understand that and you haven't gotten confused if you are confused i advise you to rewind the video and watch it's all over from the beginning again. 
depending on where you don't understand actually so we're gonna move to the next thing that is operations with variables okay so when it comes to variables you can also do different things with variables as i explained in the variable tutorials that variables are just references to values or it's a place order for a value okay so we'll create number one equals to 55 and then we'll create number two equals to 33 so what we want to do is we're gonna print number underscore two divided by number underscore one so what Python does is it searches for number 20 number two input 33 here searches for number one and then input 55 here so let's save that and run so 0.6 so now let's do something more interesting here we're gonna ask for number one from the user so we're gonna use the input function with parentheses in front then put input your first first number okay and number two to getting that from the user and input input your second sorry for that your second number okay so let's type it let's type what we'll be doing here so they, they don't get us get confused what we're supposed to be doing we're gonna print addition operation so we're gonna be performing an addition operation over here so let's come back down here and we'll print number one plus number two man plus number two and then we'll save and we run so input your first number that's 44 44 and then one oh surprisingly we get 441 so if you remember if you remember i told you that inputs converts whatever we give it to a string so i did intentionally so you can understand what i'm saying so when we add strings together it just adds this like words for as you can see it thinks this is a, sh a word and then it adds this other one to it so that's what we want so the best thing to do here is we also you can also convert this to an integer by using the integer int function that converts it to an integer as well okay and we use that at the beginning of this one as well so now when input gets our input from the users it converts it to an integer so what this does is this function as you can see we have, must have the opening bracket and the closing bracket so it, whatever we get if it was a seven converted to a string it changes back to an integer the same thing applies here then we can add our numbers together and print out the result successfully so let's save that now if you to get what we want so we're gonna use five here i'm gonna use one here now we have six i hope you understood what just happened yeah so i'm gonna come back refresh from beginning i'm just gonna i'm just gonna explain this here instead so when we use the inputs function here the inputs over here the inputs gets the inputs from the user and then converts it to a string to this type of string so what this integer function does is it converts a string to an integer so that's basically what happens so we can also check the type of number one to confirm that it actually changed it, changed it to an integer so we're gonna print okay sorry <laughs> i almost forgot addressing the print over there so we're gonna print number one type of number one so don't get confused whenever you open your bracket you must close it as you can see i have to close it here or else it's gonna give you an error so print open bracket bracket and then this here and then we we'll type with open brackets and then we we'll close it over here as you can see okay so we're gonna print the type of number i'm gonna i'm gonna save and run it as you can see okay so let me type 44 and 3 so what we did here we printed the type of number one that is 44 so as you can see it changed it to int but if we should remove this integer function don't forget to remove the opening brackets. I'm just gonna remove this line. 
so we're gonna run that as you can so we're gonna type 44 as you can see a string is in strings so what we do is we put the in use the integer function instead int and then we're gonna save it and save it and run it so 44 sorry i'm gonna put one instead okay so as you can see it has changed it to an integer successfully so you can also, as i was saying you can perform operation with variables num1 equals to int op, close and open it before you type your input not so you are, as not to get confused you close and open and close it rather and then you type input your first number and then you should get your first number from the first number from the user so i'm gonna give you an assignment here so what i want you to do is you can duplicate this call it you can duplicate it and call it num2 so what i want you to do is when you get add your numbers save it in a variable save your results in a variable called sum no i'm not going to be using sum called total and then print your results in the format the total is whatever your number is let's assume the sum of your number is 55 so you can pause the video right now and do that i'm going to be doing it right away too so now let's let's solve this to ensure you really understand data types um operation with variables and the input function as well i didn't plan to talk about this in function but i had to talk about it so you understand how the input works in a way okay so let's get it let so we create the okay so let me do it beneath this one create a variable called total so our result is going to be num one plus num two so you can also do this in a variable you can add things together in a variable as well so what this does python as gets num, num one whatever users as the user has inputted it gets num two whatever the user has inputted as well and then it saves it in the total variable same we're gonna do here we're gonna print what we had done earlier the total is so this time around we are not going to be using the plus which means we can i'm gonna show you something interesting by not using plus here so comma and then total is another way of printing um strings and other types together but here we're gonna have an integer and we're also going to have a string here so normally in python if you if you had used the plus it's going to be an error so what we're gonna do here is use the comma instead of using the plus so we can print a string together with an integer okay so we're gonna save that and then we're gonna run it so here, is, here it says input your first number 44 and we're gonna use 21 so the total is 25 65 so let me show what we, what would have happened if we had used the plus here with a with an integer okay so if you save that and run it we're gonna use five and four as you can see type error can only concatenate string to string not integer so python cannot add integers plus strings again i can only add strings to strings and then integers to integers but with the help of this comma we added here it helps us add the separator that is the space to this one here in between this and this it helps us add the space to it and then also help us add two different data types together so you can also add more things here as far as they are valid you can add array as well for example okay so we're gonna use i'm gonna come down here 44 i don't know i'm using 44 but we'll just use that so the total is 110 array as you can see so you can keep adding as much as things as you want so just play around with this and it should be really fun you're gonna enjoy how it really works so that's python for today if you enjoyed the video make sure you give it a thumbs up subscribe and I'll be dropping the next video soon. So have a nice day or wherever you are. Have a nice evening. Good night. Good afternoon. Good morning.